Awesome. So again, thank you so much for joining us today um, for our Are You My Leader workshop. Um, this presentation uh, from our Be Engaged workshop series is brought to you by Success Services and the Office of Student Financial Aid. And this presentation was actually adapted um, from our partners in the Center for Leadership and Involvement. We're very excited to talk to you all today um, and be able to continue our series of virtual webinars. Um, before we really get into our workshop today, we wanted to start with a few housekeeping items. Um, so as I mentioned, the session is recorded, so those that cannot join us today will be able to watch later. Um, if you, second, if you're not as familiar with Blackboard Collaborate, we wanted to just highlight a few items. So first, you're welcome to raise your hand um, at any point in time if you have a question or something to share. Um, so on the bottom, kind of middle of your screen, you should see a person with their hand up. Um, and you can just uh, click on that and that'll raise your hand and then we'll be able to make sure that you get to share. Um, you can also use the mute and unmute. Um, so there is that uh, microphone icon as well and you can hit that to mute and unmute yourself. Um, lastly, we also encourage you to use the chat feature. So there is that pinkish purple um, kind of arrow down at the bottom. And if you click on that, it'll open a menu, which will allow you um, to see a chat bubble. And so we encourage you to participate in the chat as well, um, if that is your preferred way to kind of chat or talk with us today. So we will go ahead and move on. All right, so we're going to start today by introducing just a little bit about student success services within the Office of Student Financial Aid. Our success services include a range of resources, which include one-to-one -one success coaching and basic needs support, both of which work to provide essential support to our students. So one-to-one um, -one success coaches will work with you to help you make a plan for success and to create some goals that you can meet during your time at UW-Madison, while basic needs can help you get access to things like insurance, food, and um, health care. Additionally, we have our workshop series, which covers a diverse set of topics designed to enhance individual success. And we have our mentorship piece, which launched over the summer, and if you're interested in getting involved in that either as a mentee or a mentor just reach out to one of us our emails will be end and also on this slide as well so our space is open located in uh, 33 East Campus Mall, uh, but for right now, um, we are available um, all virtually. So our basic needs coordinators, as well as our success coaches, are available to meet with you through a video chat or just over the phone if you prefer that. You can visit our website located at the bottom of our, our screen here um, if you wanna learn a little bit more about us or get in touch with us. So let's do some introductions for today. So my name is Casey Strahl and I am the Student Experience Manager in the Office of Student Financial Aid. Hi, I'm Lucy Wren and I'm a first year master's student and one of the success coaches within Success Services. The role of the success coach is designed to help you identify a pathway of success across different areas, optimize your opportunities, and overall enhance your Wisconsin experience. Okay, so back to our workshop, Are You My Leader? The purpose of this presentation is to explore what leadership looks like to you. And you'll notice that Casey and I are gonna turn our cameras off at this point, just to hopefully help the internet connection along. So to start things off and to make sure that your mics or your chat boxes or your raise hand function are working, just go ahead and shout some things out about what leadership is. And by a shout out, I mean, you can unmute yourself, you can type in the chat, you can raise your hand. Um, but what are good, what are things that good leaders do or say? So for instance, good leaders build trust or they're trans. What other ideas?
Yeah, great. Leadership is being confident and a positive role model for others. That's that's a really great, uh, important aspect of leadership. They empower others around them. Absolutely. They make people feel comfortable and safe. That's absolutely a, a really important aspect of leadership. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, those are all really great things um, that you all were able to share. Um, so now let's do a brief activity. So if you can find a piece of paper behind you um, or around you, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a big one. Um, but then also grab a pen or a pencil, something to write with, and then draw a house. And we'll give you a few minutes um, or a minute or two here just to draw a picture of a house. Okay, so even if you're not totally done yet, that's okay. Um, but let's let's stop and do a quick check in here. Did your house look like this? Or was it something closer to this? I'm gonna send a poll right now. You're just gonna share whether your house looked more like uh, the first picture picture on the current slide or something else. All right, that poll is coming to you right now. Yeah, so it looks like all of us had a house that looked more like the one on the current slide. Because of the cultural norms that we as Americans are raised with, the years of implicit signaling from all around us um, that this is what house is like. This is the image we tend to conjure up in our own minds when we're asked to think about, or in this case, to draw a house. Right. So as Lucy just said, these implicit signals influence our understanding of what a house looks like. Um, so type in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself uh, to help us answer this next question. So what might have influenced even subconsciously your drawing? Movies, great example. So your own house looking very similar to that. Books, great examples. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, so a lot of what you just mentioned in the chat and then things that are listed here on the slide, these are definite influences for how we build a mental model of what a house looks like. Just throughout history, you know, in American culture, we have that white picket fence ideal. Um, and then I think we've been taught, you know, thinking back to, you know, um, 
in school when you've been asked to draw houses or you know books that you might have seen in school from read alouds even from when you were very very young um, as well as tv shows and media and your environment and the culture in the area that you're in as well so for instance houses here in madison look really really than houses in florida that have to meet hurricane guidelines We all have mental models or base representations of a given thing in our head, and these mental models are influenced by the world around us. So this quote here helps us to make the point that we're getting at really beautifully. So mental models are deeply ingrained assumptions, generalizations, pictures, or images that influence how we understand the world and how we take action. So I'm sure you're by this point wondering when we're going to connect this back to leadership. Let's talk about our mental model of a leader. You can unmute yourself or you can type in the chat what your mental model of a leader looks like. This is different from our question a few minutes ago about constitutes leadership. Instead, just like with the houses we drew, if we asked you to draw, a, what would you draw? What would that person look like? So for instance, for me, a leader is normally, yeah, Casey, I was just about to say the same thing, normally someone who's older, um, dressed really professionally, yeah, older again. We just assume that leaders have experience and that with experience, time has passed and therefore the person must be older. Okay, someone who is encouraging a group of people, Right, any other like, uh, physical attributes, and it's totally okay if you're falling back on stereotypes right now. All right, let's go ahead and keep moving. So these are some really great chairs to get us started. So thank you for participating in that. Google also had some ideas. So we typed leader dash business into a Google image search and these were the first five hits. What do you notice in these pictures? Feel free to chat or unmute yourself to share. What are the things that stand out to you? They are all men. Mm -hmm. Anything else stand out? Yeah, mostly white men. Mm -hmm. And to Charlotte's point, yeah, these leaders are placed in front and not besides others. Exactly. So, right, um, they're all dressed professionally. Yeah, so all five of these pictures show a white man in power. Um, it, so it was in our Google search, it was the 14th picture before a woman showed up in a leadership position. It was the 22nd picture before a black man was shown in what might be considered a leadership role. So unlike these pictures that are here, um, the picture shows the black man at the same level of the other employees, but is still the, was the main uh, person in focus. And it was the 25th picture before a black woman was shown in a leadership position. According to a Wall Street Journal in September 2020, amongst the CEOs of all Fortune 500 companies, only 68 are not white men. Of the 68 CEOs, five are black men. 10 are Asian men, 
16 are Hispanic men, one was a Hispanic woman, two were Asian women, and 34 were white women. So the point we're trying to get at here is that leaders do not all have to look the same or sound the same. And they definitely do not all lead the same. Leaders inspire positive action, like we've been talking about. These pictures are all examples of leaders. So how do we start to change our view of leadership so that our mental model, when our mental model comes up, we don't just see this one type of leader that's being pushed in our culture? These mental models are based on years of experience and cultural saturation, and we won't be able to completely shift our thinking in this one workshop. However, experts agree that the first step in changing our mental models is recognizing their flaws in the first place. A recent example took place in 2016 when a black actress was cast to portray Hermione in London's production of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. This caused a huge uproar, but in fact, in the books, Hermione skin tone is never specified. Another example might be people who you get over the phone and who you might have based on their voice, but when you meet in person, they look completely different from what you had imagined. One more example might be if a friend is telling you about someone who's struggling with technology in some kind of way, you might automatically picture an older relative of theirs, even without any evidence to prove that that's who they're talking about. Other than that, the person's struggling with technology. This all goes back to our mental models. We're going to poll right now. Have you ever had an experience where your mental model has been proved wrong? Just quick yes or no. I'll go ahead and send that. Have you ever had an experience where your mental model has been proven wrong? Yeah, so one experience that I can speak to personally, it looks like all of us have had that experience. Um, I was recently reading a case study that the author was part of. The author was interning at a school and described themselves briefly as part of the introduction. And the mental model I built based on that description was of a tall, lanky, young white man. This is probably based on my experience in schools where more than one principal I've worked with fits that description exactly. But going back and reading again, there's no evidence at all to support any of that mental model I had built, other than that the author is male. But he could be disabled, he could be older, he could be black, Latino, or another race, he could identify as LGBT+, or any number of other identities that my mental model was just completely erasing. We all, all uh, answered yes in that and if anyone is willing to share an experience that their mental model was really off, uh, go ahead and type that in the chat now or unmute your. I'll give just a little bit because I know this might be longer to type out. So if you're still typing, that's totally okay. We would love to hear about your experiences uh, in starting to recognize these mental models. We can really start doing the work of reevaluating our mental models right away. 
And again, if you're still typing, that's totally fine. You can still uh, submit in the chat. But the next time you're reading, take a moment to reflect on how you're picturing the characters in your head. Is there ev any evidence for why you're picturing the characters the way that you are? Could the character be a different race or could they have a disability? Could they identify as LGBT plus? Whenever you can, try changing your mental models to begin shifting your, once you're aware of these flaws and motivated to change your mental models, you can begin the work to notice your thinking and start to intentionally make changes. I don't see any examples in the chat yet, but again, if you are still typing, that's totally fine. Feel free to submit uh, a little later. We are going to keep moving in the slideshow for right now. So we wanted to connect this to UW-Madison's leadership framework, um, which is um, one of the creators of that is the Center for Leadership and Involvement, or CFLI. So the UW-Madison leadership framework demonstrates how everyone is a leader and that leadership will and can look differently for everyone. There are three key principles for the leadership framework, and those are, one, leadership is action-oriented is an action-oriented endeavor, not based on position or level of authority. Two, context matters, and every situation requires a unique engagement. And three, the act of leadership is the phenomenon of positive change in an individual, a group, or a community's beliefs, values, or behaviors. These three principles demonstrate that leadership is everyone's role. And it, and it will look differently depending on the environment and the context. There's lots of ways you can build on your leadership skills while you're here at UW-Madison, and it'll look really different for each of us. The important aspects are that we are all leaders and we're all working to make positive change around us. So let's take some examples from the CFLI framework that Casey just walked us. You could practice listening attentively to your group mates and considering their ideas carefully the next time you have a group project. Or you can be a model for others by following the SMART. You could practice giving feedback by offering to read over a friend or roommate's latest assignment. Or practice receiving feedback by asking classmates how they thought your presentation went if given the chance in a class or breakout room. One way to reflect on your own leadership skills is to consider doing the Leadership Certificate Program, which is facilitated through the Center for Leadership and Involvement. The certificate is a formal acknowledgement of the contributions and achievements that I'm sure you all are already doing as students. So if you're interested in the leadership certificate, you start by doing a couple things, the following steps here that are on the slide. So one is attend an information session um, or view the information session online. You would complete a leadership competency activity. So this requires feedback from five people um, kind of in your circle. Um, and then you want to uh, bring that information into an advising appointment which is the last step here, um, is to schedule an advising appointment with the leadership certificate staff, which you can do through Starfish. Um, and so it's a really great, even if you don't want to do the certificate per se, um, the leadership competencies activity is quite fascinating just to see and hear what others around you um, think about your leadership. So once you become part of the program um, for the leadership certificate, uh, it you know this is a process that really spans over your time as a student. So you can start it as a first year student and start to document the things that you're doing on campus and in the community. Um, and then you know some folks will will complete, most um, students will complete it in their third or fourth year. Um, but it really encompasses all of the things that you're already doing as a student. Um, and so the requirements are up here. Um, we're definitely happy to answer any questions. Um, I've actually been a leadership certificate reviewer for a number of years now um, and really enjoy um, the opportunity to connect with students about the, the awesome things that they're doing. OK, 
Okay, so today we broke down some of the mental models that we may have subconsciously had about what a leader looks like. We discussed how much more work we still have to do to see diverse groups of people as leaders. And we also discussed how you can build your leadership skills here at UW-Madison. Do you have any other questions or comments before we wrap up for the day? You can unmute yourself or type in the chat. Thanks, Charlotte. No other questions? All right. Without any other questions. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we will continue to um, provide um, some content and workshops that hopefully support your transition, our continued transition into an e uh, learning environment as well as resources that help you develop skills um, to address any challenges that might be coming up um, in terms of your pathway to success. Uh, please feel free to access our website. Um, we have a library of past presentations on our website if you want to um, learn different resources and skill sets. Um, so we encourage you to those out. But uh, until next time, take care. And again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for joining us.